Ted uh, meeting that we have every year, but we try to. Uh, unfortunately, it's been postponed a few times this year, also because of the weather that we've been having. Um, when we go about this, I will be calling up department heads. Um, we'd just like to have them list their goals and any projects that they're working on or projects that keep coming down the road. But before I call the first one, I'd like to take a minute to introduce Tyler Wollenden. He's right here. Tyler would like to stand up. He is uh, from Senator Bobby's office, and uh, Tyler would like to say a few words. So the floor is yours, Tyler. Thanks. I just wanted to come by and introduce myself. A lot of you probably know my dad. We live here in town. Um, so I've been recently, meeting at the beginning of the year, hired as Senator Kobe's district director. Uh, so my job is to interact with town governments. And so I'm here to sit around and hand out my business card if you like it. And any, uh, any problems, you can come to us, any state issues. Um, I did have something very briefly for the select board, if I can take up a minute of your time, is that uh, this morning I passed the information on the uh, Route 32 bridge dedication to the Department of Transportation to get these signs uh, properly created and painted and installed. And I know that uh, at the next meeting I was told uh, you're going to possibly talk about the date of that um, event. And so I had told them the current date of the uh, 23rd. And so I'd just like to note that, of course, the Department of Transportation is a large state bureaucracy, and these are not known for being the most flexible institution. So if you were to change it, I'd encourage you to try to change it to a later date as opposed to an earlier date, because it shouldn't be a problem to have the signs installed a little bit earlier versus having to make sure that the signs uh, come in much earlier than than they are currently intended. So I just want to make a quick note of that, uh, and otherwise, uh, just stop by and say hi. Uh, thank, you very thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Tyler. Um, Tyler, you're yeah. um, just that you hold office hours. Yes. Um, I'm, on a monthly basis, I've been holding office hours at the Henry Woods building. Uh, the upcoming hours are actually. <laughs> There's some time. Yes. yes. Should be in the bearing is that it's also on. Okay, yeah, 20. Yeah. And otherwise, it'll be on a monthly basis. I've considered moving them over to the senior center, so whatever works better for people. Yeah, what time is that? Um, so, let me do 12. 11, yeah, 11. Yeah, it's in the, the bearing is that, and it's on, uh, and has the, not the, not the legislature website, but uh, senatorangobi.com has them all listed. And certainly, if Someone were not able to attend that wasn't married, there's no problem to come down to the ones or wherever is convenient for people. So thank you. Thank you very much. Tyler, you have one of your cards? Yes. Thank you. But 
probably the, uh, the agency will probably leverage their influence on the other agencies throughout the Commonwealth in order to include that app and also to educate customers that farmers are out here, we're important, we have things that are healthy for you, and just help forge the bridge between consumers and farmers. So that's what the Agricultural Commission has been doing on kind of a loose basis for a little while. So we get a call for something new, that's when we'll rise to action. So if anybody has any questions or concerns around agriculture, that's what we're here for. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Sure. Sure. Um, one of the things when we first began everything, when we were talking about um, signs and all of that, after we passed the law, the Agricultural Commission was going to put the signs at the entrances to the major roadways. How is that coming along? Hasn't gone very far. Uh, made phone calls to the Department of Transportation. I mean, as um, a test, they are a rather large organization. I was never able to get a uh, confirmation back to them, and then I never followed up. And then, of course, there's money. So, at that time, maybe when funds are a little bit more fluid, and there seems to be more of, of interest or need, we'll pick it up again. So, in a nutshell, but we can pick it up at any time. I mean, we have a template that other towns have used. We've heard complaints from other towns that their commissions basically bolt them onto existing signs, which is not allowed. I suppose to get guidance from the Department of Transportation or local authorities. So we have to go. Okay, I just said, I've seen them going up in more and more towns as you right. drive through. So I was just curious about that. And, and, and they're, very, they're all very different. And they're all simple and, and they're, they look very nice. So I was just curious. Okay. I think that is an interest. Maybe we'll bring that back up to you then. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you. Okay, next up is the Inlands and Rescue. I'll uh, call them on Sally's phone. There was a brief summary. I'm Charlie Fulham, I'm the EMS director at the present time. Um, we're busy. I don't know how many calls we're going to have this year, but we'll have enough. We're, we're changing the billing companies, so we're going to decide to change the billing companies. We're uh, in the process of doing that. I don't know when the effective date is. April 6th. April 6th? Mm -hmm. Okay, so until April 6th, we send that stuff still to the other billing companies. Right. <coughs> Um, I think either this year, 2015, or next year, we're going to need to buy one new ambulance. One has well over 100,000 miles on it. So that's something to think about. And the capital planning thing was scheduled for this year, but we could probably push it out another year. Um, there's a new CPR method out there for EMS. We call it cerebral cardiac resuscitation. It requires 120 compressions a minute for eight minutes. Two minutes check, two minutes check, two minutes check, two minutes check. If I do that for eight minutes, I'm dead. <laughs> and everybody else on the squad will be dead. It's, 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 it's almost imperative that we buy some machines that do the compressions for you. Most of the surrounding towns have them already. They're not inexpensive. I hope that I, I had a little push it added to my budget for next year so I could purchase them. They're roughly thirteen thousand dollars a piece. Is that mandatory though? It's not mandatory, but unless you have two or three people in the back of the truck, the patient doesn't get a choice. He's not gonna make it. There's only you know, if there's one person back there doing everything, and one person driving, if we look if we lived in Worcester and we had three minutes to get to the hospital or five minutes. Not really mandatory, but all the towns around, I shouldn't say all, most of the towns around, including most of the EMS, have purchased these things. I have a brochure on them and a price on them. You can lease them for so much a month for five years if you have to. A couple hundred bucks a month for five years. So that's one of the things we're looking at, trying to figure out a way to do that. The next thing is 
people in general becoming heavier. The general public. I'm not looking at any individual person, but a lot of the general public are getting heavier. And when you need to buy some stretches that pick up more weight sooner or later. But we're at the limit at the moment. So that's, that's not as expensive as these other things, but sooner or later we're going to have to buy two more stretches. And I'm open for questions after that, because that's all I know. Okay. <laughs> Anybody have any questions for Charlie? Just one little one. So, oh. so hold on. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. How many EMTs and medics do we have now? We have 14 basics and 14 medics. Okay. Part-time or per or whatever. So there is this new method. But the 14 only. The, All right. the general public still does it the same old way. Okay, but if you have a choice between getting tucked out and doing nothing, and using the old method, which gave you some relief, well, wouldn't you continue with that? There's almost no positive results from the old method going from here to the hospital. <laughs> with this new method, there are some positive results. So basically, because we're half an hour away from the hospital, mm -hmm. nobody's going to make it mm -hmm. the old way. Mm -hmm. And not everybody's going to make it the new way, but some will.
in our engineer's hands at this point to make the award of the contract, and then eventually it would get to the board of select, I'm assuming, for their signature to sign off. And then the next step will be a pre-construction meeting. Hopefully the snow will be gone by April, and they can start in April or May. That's the plan as, as of right now. If they can start by May, we could possibly finish by December of, like, of this year. There's a good chance. That would be nice. Yeah. Okay. Be nice. That's about all. That's all the information I have. For Paul Cranston is the, is the chairman of the committee, and he just could not be here today. So I'm filling in. <laughs> Any questions for Jarrett? Kathy? I'm going to start in the center of town. I, I'm sorry, Kathy. Where's it going to start in the center of town? Where's it going to start in the center of town? What's the Oh, that hasn't been determined yet. That hasn't been determined yet. That will be determined at the pre-construction meeting. Okay. We'll have to sit down with the contractor and <coughs> you'll be notified either through Barry Gazette or. Any other questions for John? Okay, John, before you sit down, John, you want to just stay right there and we'll skip down to the uh, DPW. So you're filling in for that and also DPW Commission. Uh, Jason Cometa was the DPW Superintendent. He's not in attendance, so we'll have John, if you wouldn't mind, give a few words about the DPW. Well, I'm not prepared to make a speech on the DPW. All I can say is uh, I This winter, as we all know, the snow has been unbelievable. With the minimum staff that we have in the DPW, everybody worked like crazy during these storms. And I personally only had one complaint all went along. That's fantastic. The streets were, if you drove around the other towns, you would know that Barry streets were open, a little narrow because no place to put the snow. But they did an excellent job, and kudos to all of them on the water, sewer, and highway. They all get to, together to plow and sand and salt. So that's the only thing I can say. Of course, we can, we can use more money. <laughs> that's what goes without saying to upgrade our equipment. But that's about it. Anything else, Richard? Nope. Oh, Charlie, yeah, I didn't ask a question, but I have a statement. Every time we've gone out this one, the ambulance to pick up somebody, they've done an excellent job. You've done an excellent job. Thank you, Charlie.
For electricity, we contracted with Direct Energy. So some of you may have seen that on your bills that you receive for your department. And we, um, RJ McDonald has propane and heating oil, the town. Alston Company out of Methuen has the contract for the Civil War Monument, which right now um, is on hold because the funding for that project was part of the night sea cuts. But our um, representative um, and senator's office are both working on that issue for us as well. The um, board decided to switch, as Charlie said, their ambulance billing to another company. Um, hopefully we'll see a higher rate of collection with the new company. And that will help with uh, funding, making the ambulance more self-sufficient. And we are currently negotiating with companies to take over the transfer station. So we're in the midst of negotiations with that company. Acuity of Auburn networked our computers um, for the Henry Woods building, which networked the DPW commission and um, the fire department to that building. So everything's backed up on um, two main servers in the building. And we have on-site and off-site backup now, which we did not have before. And we contracted to have the lobby floors done in the Henry Woods building. Um, so those were finished uh, just recently. And the sheriff's office has been helping out tremendously with painting. It's been there for many weeks, painting different areas in the building. So trying to keep the building um, maintained well. So it helps in repairs in the long run. Um, and it has also saved, the Sheriff's Office saved us paying for bail and wage, which we're required to do on projects. Other bids that we're looking, um, going to do in the coming, this fiscal year are uh, wastewater treatment sludge disposal, because that was taken care of by waste management, and the town will have to get those services going forward. Insurance for EMS personnel and elevator services for the library. The board approved two policies this fiscal year. In October, they adopted the ambulance um, billing. It covers um, hardship requests and a procedure set forth of how we handle collections. The other policy was the emergency closing of facilities policy, which addresses emergency closing of town buildings. Looking forward to some of the projects that we hope to finalize between now and the end of the fiscal year, are finishing the repairs to the town um, Henry Woods building, including repairing the stairwell, uh, the stairwells, and the flooring of the stairwells. Drafting new employee performance evaluations, which the board hopefully will discuss at their April 6th meeting. Doing a spring cleaning of all our town buildings to get rid of obsolete um, furniture and um, things that we no longer need. Working on finding a solution for our ITs, and that would include looking at a regional IT position um, with either area towns or the school, and updating job descriptions, and then the compensation classification plan. There's a lot going on. Um, but I wanted to thank everyone for um, that I work with, both volunteers, and um, employees for all your hard work that you do and um, the difference that you make in the town. Jeff, would you like to say a few words about this one forward? Yeah, I, I just think um, there's so much that's going on and it, it seems as though it takes place very smoothly and much of that is due to the fact that um, we have a great team of people who lead us and Heather certainly is the head of that team. And um, it's, it works because everybody tries to work together. And not that there are not problems in any town or with personnel, but it's just that you're always trying to work with those people and trying to find the best solution that works for both. And all of the people who work for us and all of the volunteers, I mean, we could not pay to have it work if we were a private company. It just, it works so well and we're so thankful for everything that, that all of you do. And um, we've been very fortunate with the monies that have come in and with the public safety money that has come in. We have a concern about the Civil War Monument, but we will certainly work it out. And we're very concerned about unfunded mandates. I think it's one of the things that um, 
we truly need to work together with the government on and um, find a way to resolve it because you just can't say to a town, you have to do this. You have to find a way of money-wise dealing with it because um, the town pays its bills on time and they have to have enough money in order to do that. And I know the Electments Association for Worcester Central Worcester received a um, email from them and they would like to, on this coming Thursday, um, send a letter from Central Massachusetts which says that the towns really don't believe that we can pay prevailing wage the way they have set it up. That it does not work for towns and it, it adds upwards of 30% to a cost of a project which is a very expensive cost. And if we could find a way to make that work better, because it does not work now. So um, that's about it. Thanks, everybody, for everything you do. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you all.
thoroughly in the best interest of Barry at heart from everybody putting up some bare slack for it. And I just want to thank everybody also. Does anybody have any questions for Board of Slackman?
also are able to get statistics on the heat, how often the boiler is turning on, there's all these fancy bells and whistles, graphs, all kinds of things. Um, the Energy Committee just purchased a touchscreen computer and we're going to put it in the library and let patrons go around the system, touch the screen, go, you can go into the boiler room and, and see what the temperature of the boiler is. And you know, as the warmer, as it gets warmer outside, the internal temperature of the boiler goes down. As it's like really cold days, it goes up. So you can see all of that, what equipment is running correctly. And it's nice because it's color coded, so when everything's good, it's green. If it's red, it's too hot. If it's blue, it's too cold. Um, which is just a really nice visual. So townspeople are going to be able to come in and just poke around in the system and see how well it's working. And um, we're going to use it as a platform for education, for energy. And hopefully we can get other programs in there and, and, and maybe even some children's programming for energy savings. We're, we're looking into doing a grant with the Boston Children's Museum, maybe. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and, and getting some programs for adults, too. And, Maybe working with the, the Envirothon students have come in and checked out the system and we'll see how they can get involved. So we're really excited for that. Well, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. All right, we're next. Cable Advisory Committee, Josh Kett Johnson, Josh Henry from the Cable Advisory went to Sanderson. Civilian Law Enforcement Advisory Review from John Scott. Cemetery Commissioners, I do not see a Cemetery Commissioner in attendance. Code Enforcement, Georgia is not here. Uh, conservation, don't see anybody from Conservation here wants to speak. Council on Aging, anybody to step in for last time? The Cultural Council, anybody members are not present? We've already done the DPW Energy Advisory Committee. Gail, would you like to get up and say a few words? I think um, Stephanie did his whole presentation. <laughs> 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 because the you're so rich in the whole time. So I would like to just, just give a, a bird's eye view of where we've been. Um, the data is, is arguable at this point, but Finishing off the year last year was about 14 percent savings, um, which we're going to try to get through town meeting and like some support around getting that through town meeting to, uh, to have that those funds sequestered so we can do additional energy work. Uh, but we're believing that we're in, in the vicinity of 20 percent savings of, of, uh, for the whole town over the baseline. That would be including all, all projections off of what's coming out of the Henry Woods. Uh, 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 building and the, the Memorial Library. Um, so those two things are going to add a lot, to, a lot back and hopefully we'll get it there. Uh, we have a portion of the budget still working future-wise. Uh, well, actually, we're still looking back at the sewage treatment. This is the biggest uh, savings that we've garnered thus far with the, with the advent of those motors and, uh, uh, and retrofitting over there, saving the town future money on New motors too, obviously. So that was, uh, you know, something else that was going to come up in the budget. Now it doesn't come up because they've been replaced. Um, so that's basically where we are to, to date. Uh, with uh, the remaining money, the board has elected or uh, has voted to do controls on the uh, the Henry Woods. So we'll be in the same situation as the library, and with hopefully with the same efficacy and. Uh, uh, and hopefully with the same results uh, monetarily. The uh, additional funds, if, if available, we still like to do the wind certs in the uh, Henry Woods building, uh, in addition to the, uh, the mechanical uh, in that building. Uh, I don't know how many people have been in the library and witnessed the wind certs in there, nine out of hundred of them in that building, uh, maybe 98. <laughs> And uh, so um, well, that should have some, some great savings as well. But with the money we have, uh, hopefully going to be sequestering after town meeting or you know, get, get start to get, build a fund for that, we're very much interested in seeing what we can do in the senior center to, uh, to remedy that, those issues there. One thing that Seth didn't talk to you about was on that system, 
that's going to be put in, in um, a wall monitored uh, touchscreen uh, uh, interactive uh, you know, programs over there. Uh, we've got the information coming in real time from solar arrays here in town that will be augmented into that system so you'll be able to look at what's being generated here in town in, town in real time and cumulatively what's been generated uh, and see that on one side of the panel or you know, click into it as part of the menu to uh, be able to see what's going on as we're going on for generation here in town. Just to see both sides, use sources and uses panel. Excellent. Thank you, Neil. Any questions for Neil? So how does how is that I'm sorry, I just question. so is that the solar all the private or just the town solar? No, the town doesn't have any solar, but the you know, all the private installations. That's part of the planning board when we when we we have to have an exercise of law for decommissioning. So we always needed to know when they were out of service, but since there's no smoke coming out of a stack or, mm -hmm. or anything else, we have to know when when the systems weren't being used. And so we're plugged in, or well, the town will be plugged in to uh, knowing when they're operating. And, uh, and that includes like the solar on helping people's roofs? And no, no, this is all the commercial installations. Commercial. Which, uh, okay, there's a good number of them starting to get around town. So those will all be, all be uh, tapped into, so we'll have that ability to represent what they're producing. That's, that, I couldn't understand how you would get that information, but it's because of the planning board's requirement. Therefore, you, you get that information. To the regs, yeah, to, to get that, because uh, we needed some way to track it. So everybody that's signed on with uh, the program after that uh, reg was changed, then we have that ability. And we can reject from that, because the systems are you know, fairly the same. Fantastic. Yeah. That's great. Any other questions from you? Thank you. All righty. Finance Committee, David Tuttle, Chairman David. How's it going, David? Hey. Oh, sorry, this comment the garden already. <laughs> but good evening, everybody. We're uh, uh, created to our budget cycle again. Uh, many of you have already been between, uh, before us. I know uh, uh, Clear's back and uh, we're meeting Wednesday night, Ted's in the back. Uh, we do have a new member, Rick Lindstrom, who's joining us on Wednesday night and we put our vacancy on the committee. But, you know, it's typical, it's April, everything looks good. Our rules usually start from May, so we're the final number start rolling in. But yeah, I do want to thank all of you uh, very much. I mean it, you know, as uh, the select we were saying, we have had our challenges in town financially. Uh, many different things going on. It's not just revenue going down. Everything we've gone through, and I think one of the nicest things about this has been we've all kind of pulled together. And you see a lot of towns are always pitting one group against the other, and the schools against the fire, or this against that. And I think one of the nice things about the town of Battery is the fact that everything we've gone through, our senior center's still open, the library's still open, police fire, we're still operating. You know, maybe not at the full level we, we really would like it to be at, but we've all pulled together and really have kept things going. And I think that's uh, Really, it's it's not us. We just put the numbers you give us together. It's really all of you folks put the budgets together, the manager departments, and um, you know our meetings are probably some of the boringest around now. Yet everyone comes in close to what we ask them to be at. So some of the chief, he still likes that police chief. He likes to uh, uh, surround us a little bit. You know, we do get so excited in our meetings. Um, I do also want to say I have because of my position, the occasion of going to work at all hours of the evening this year. And, the town of Barry, the roads were great. You guys did a wonderful job, the highway department and everybody else involved in it. Um, you really did a great job. And budget-wise, I did have the occasion last um, well, last Monday, we met with the Secretary of a and f to talk about budgets and going forward and things like that. And he did express some concerns about the state's financial picture. is a little bit bleaker than they had thought coming in. And it may last a couple of years. The only reassuring thing about it was the fact that she said it's not really, you know, they like to see money spent in the right places and we have a governor and secretary folks who support communities, so hopefully local aid and the things really lie on will stay solid for the next couple of years. So that was kind of reassuring to hear. We did actually talk about our civil war monuments, so hopefully we'll hear something on that. The one concerning thing about it is there is a cash flow problem. It's not just Barry facing this revenue regional dispatch 
who's building our towers. I don't know if you've probably haven't even heard this yet. They've spent all the money. They haven't gotten any grant money yet from the state. And we haven't received some CDA money we were accounting for the sheriff's department. So the, the times are tough on the state, but hopefully they'll keep supporting local aid. Um, the last thing I want to say is that I want to thank uh, uh, you know, our police and fire and those folks too this year. Um, my, my daughter had her first new driver experience, um, driving on a flat tire, stuck the radio and uh, turn the radio up and sound go away, but the, you, guys, <laughs> you guys were great. I just wanted to say we were very kind to her as they uh, helped on the side of the road and, and everybody. But really for everything we do, I know we have a lot of challenges coming up. We have a lot of projects we've done. Um, there's a lot still to do. I know, you know, when we're doing the new public safety building, but the reality is, is we're going to have to start making some more investments into the town in terms of our uh, equipment. You know, our fire department's getting very old, and I think every year, I was thinking about this chief coming up, and every year I use the same line, we're so past the grade we really are. We've been very fortunate with uh, keeping the equipment up, but I know there's a lot of investment we're going to have to make once we pay off some of these other debts that we have. But uh, I just want to thank all of you for your hard work. You really make it possible, and keeping your budgets in line and not overspending and, and all that. And look forward to seeing whether we have queued up for Wednesday night. I want to thank Heather and Faye, too, for for all the support that they give us. But any questions? Mm -hmm. No? Thank you, David. If you do have work for the Sheriff's Department, uh, I know we've been to Town Hall, we've been, to, we've been uh, to the library, not a lot of work, we've been at the church, so they're making fun of me at the jail right now. But uh, get, if you have any more requests, get into us soon, because the farm's starting, uh, we have a graffiti truck going out, so the inmates can pull in a lot of different directions. So if you have anything else you need done, those ways those sooner rather than later, so we can schedule them for the summertime. Thank you. All right, next up, my department, Chief Rogowski. I'm sure everybody knows me. We have uh, three priorities that are on the top of my list. Uh, our first priority, unfortunately, they're all expensive, and that's to replace our self-contained breathing apparatus for the firefighters. That's number one on my list. Uh, that's the most important thing that I can think of that the town can supply these firefighters with, protect their lungs. Just about every call we go out on today, we need to have that breathing apparatus to protect their lungs, uh, to replace that. We don't have any breathing apparatus now that are compliant. Uh, we need to upgrade them. And the upgrade is about a $200,000 project that replaces the air pack and the bottle. Uh, we did put in for we do put in for federal fire act grants uh, two years ago now we were fortunate enough to get fifty thousand dollars for an air compressor to fill the new bottles that we plan to buy and to keep up with the new air packs uh, we were able to get that through a grant so that was fifty thousand dollars we had put the whole project in at a two hundred fifty thousand dollar grant and because at that time we had five packs that were still in compliance they threw off our packs and gave us the compressor. So we did get $50,000, which was a big a jump ahead. Our second priority is to replace our aerial ladder. Our aerial ladder is in 1977. It does pass tests, but they were out testing it last month in the past. But they did mention to me, why not be thinking of replacing it? Because it's getting old and it's going to get to the point where it's not going to pass the test. And that's even a bigger expense. That's a seven hundred and fifty to eight hundred thousand dollar project to replace that. Uh, that's something that really needs to be done. In two thousand and six or seven, we bought a used aerial ladder from Fitchburg to tie us over for four or five years. Well, we're at twenty fifteen, and we're still using that aerial apparatus. It's still serving us, but it's outlived its intention. And the third. Uh, Third expense that we need to look into is with Rutland Regional Dispatch to all the uh, pagers that the fire that notify on our mobile band. Rutland Regional Dispatch is looking to not support the low band because all the rest of our radios are 400 band. We need to upgrade our pagers. We need to replace 40 pagers for the firefighters at an expense of about $20,000. Uh, so we got some big dollar expenses, but we need we need to keep up with this stuff. Our equipment's getting older, and I got a majority of my firefighters that are younger than the equipment that they're working on today. So uh, we we need to start upgrading it. Uh, Lewis pumper truck is a 1999. 
You haven't bought a pumper truck since 99. We have a 99, we have a 96, we have a 90, two 85s, two 1985s, and then the 1977 Lada. So our equipment is aging, even though it's been maintained well, it's still getting old. I just wanted to thank my guys this winter for putting up with the winter we've had. Many nights were out, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, 10, 12, 14 degrees below zero, going to fire calls. Uh, during the height of the blizzards, the firemen maneuvering their way into the fire station, getting in the apparatus, maneuvering through the town to get to the emergencies. And uh, they did a heck of a job at it. It was a tough winter. And I want to thank the highway for making sure they, uh, they went ahead of us with the plows and the sander to help us get there. Uh, even before the snow came, the month of January, as Richie can tell you, we had a lot of ice. Route 62 was a skating rink many a days. We had a lot of bad accidents as far as vehicles go. Not so much bad as far as personal injury, but we had a lot of calls that were Harry getting the equipment out. And once we were on the scene, it was Harry for the guys with the car sliding. You know, we very fortunate we didn't have any of our equipment taken out or any of our, our firefighters injured. So uh, hopefully the winter is getting towards the end and hopefully we'll start seeing some sun and warm temperatures. Any questions? Thank you, Bill. Thanks. Okay, the landfill study committee. Kathy, would you like to say a few words about that? Yep. Um, Dr. Pickens and um, and I have been working with um, Mark Popham with the Board of Health and with Heather, who has done significant work. Mark Popham is like an, an engineer who has been helping the town of Barrie and helping the Board of Health. And Heather and he have been working on an RFQ to um, decide exactly what's going to happen in the town of Barrie. And a decision, the bids came in, a decision was made that um, we are going with the company and we are going to have the landfill stay as it is and it's going to be operated by a company so that many, many people wanted the landfill to stay open. I'm sorry, wanted the transfer station to stay open. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So Heather is working right now on the logistics of all of that to make sure that that does happen. And it looks like it's a win-win for the town of Barrie. Um, and we were very, very fortunate, I think. There were three um, bidders who came in, and I think we got the best deal. And right now, um, she's also working with the sewer department, and we're working on where we are going to be bringing our sludge. And she's working on an RFQ right now for that, and this week we're going to be discussing that to see what's going to happen with the sludge. And waste management has not given a letter to say that exactly when they're closing, they, they are supposed to give us a formal letter within six months of closing. We have not received that yet. Am I correct? And we haven't received it in the last month. No, they verbally agreed um, that we can transition for July 1st to where it would be run by the new company. But we are awaiting that in writing. Correct. So we, um, it's been moving very fast. Everyone has worked very hard on it. We were all concerned what that cost was going to be um, because there were all these tales of what the cost could be. And I think the town of Barry has done very well with it. And we think that we have gone with the wishes of the town that they wanted that transfer station to be open. And right now it looks like Tuesdays and Saturdays, just as you have been doing, you're going to be able to still continue with that. And um, you'll be receiving more information as everything is solidified. Questions for Kathy? Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Okay, planning board. Neil, would you like to say a few words about the planning board? Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Mr. Not going to be here for probably a lot of city broken legs. Um, I, asked, I was asked to fill in. Um, the one main thing with the planning board, other than its normal day to day business, uh, what we've got coming up is open space development. Uh, zoning bylaw, which will hopefully be great to the, uh, the town meeting. And uh, that's, you know, it's, it's a lot. Of, it's an evening's worth of subjects to try to explain, but uh, try to give you an overview. It's where the clusters of development uh, leave the majority of the land uh, fallow, if you will, or in, in an arable state or, or just as forested. 
so that we protect the, uh, the rural nature of the town and feel it's a great uh, uh, benefit to this for the town versus staying with what we're presently using, the approval not required. So we have this cookie cutter block all along the sides of the roads. Uh, so this is being developed and been worked on for months and months. Uh, we're having a kind of a roundup meeting tomorrow night. Uh, so if people have interest and concerns, it would be a good time to show up that meeting. Uh, like at 7 o'clock, at the Henry Woods, 34. Uh, uh, the, uh, the long and the short of it, we're going to have some info, uh, informational uh, kind of charrettes to expose this, um, hopefully at least a couple of them, to get interested parties together and, uh, and hash it through and see what the, you know, see how it should be unfolded to the best wishes of the so that's hopefully to be on the warrant, and uh, it's really good stuff. So we'll be hearing from us more about that. Everything else is pretty much status quo. Thank you, Neil. Any questions for Neil? All right, moving along. Police Department, Eric. Eric Timotrakis, Police Chief. Um, Go over the emergency management. Uh, we still have that going. I'm still in the acting position for the emergency management director. If anyone wants to take it over, please see Heather. Uh, we do have a uh, secondary EOC set up, emergency operations set up uh, in South Barry, down at the uh, Elder Bus Garage. Uh, we did merge some shelter equipment down there that we work with the uh, QRAC, the Global Regional Health Coalition. Um, use some voice boxes for that. So that's uh, we're always applying for grants with that. We've been able to get different items from police related things, uh, equipment to fire related, you know, we have a fire nozzle, um, and then some cert uh, classes. So the civilian emergency response teams, we put some of those together. We've partnered with Peter Sam uh, Emergency Management to get some of those classes done. Uh, we're still trying to get more people in town certified or at least knowledgeable that you know, how to take care of yourself during a shelter or disaster. Uh, and then start working out from there. So take care of yourself and your family, and then your neighbors. Um, while I'm here, I figured I'd also talk about the Public Safety Building Committee. Uh, most of you know, if not all of you know, we received $3 million from the state thanks to uh, Senator Brewer. Uh, we've been meeting regularly. Uh, we've already picked our OPM and our architect. Today, the uh, architect came out and met with the police department and the fire department to go over our space needs or needs assessment. And we're still working on a pilot program regarding land location. Uh, now down to the police. Um, we have uh, at least 50 arrest numbers issued uh, year to date. Uh, it's a little bit lower this year than we have in previous years, most likely due to the 100 plus inches of snow. Um, but the history shows that we're still on track for our three to 400 arrest numbers issued for the year. Uh, and those go from physical in custody, get to wear the bracelets, to uh, paper, uh, paper arrests or summonses. Uh, last year we had Monty Tech students uh, come out and we do our booking room and some of the floors. Uh, so we went from having a room with a desk to an actual booking station uh, to keep officers from getting injured or um, prisoners getting injured. This year we had prisoners from the uh, Worcester County Sheriff's Office come out and do some repair and some painting on the walls and the kitchenette and the uh, admin area. Uh, the regional dispatch that we utilize uh, has issued new radios to EMS to help out with some of their uh, less than par portable radios. Uh, the police radios and I think some of the fire radios are going to be scheduled to be programmed next week. So we'll have up to date uh, radio programming for all of those. Uh, last year we did uh, replace, two, uh, replace one cruiser and get a new cruiser. Uh, we're hoping to replace one of the older cruisers this year. I did bring that up already to David and the Finance Committee. Uh, we're also expecting and hoping for an uh, additional full-time officer. Um, that would bring us up to nine full-time, not myself. In, uh, if you remember, in 2006, we had 10 full-time and 10 part-time. Uh, with everyone else, we had cuts, and we slowly built it back up. Uh, recently, we did have a promotional process, and we ele elevated a full-time officer to a sergeant, um, and he's moved in nicely into that position and we're just trying to get things situated with uh, with his uh, status and 
in, in his extra duties that he uh, took on. Uh, the officers had been extremely busy with all types of calls, ranging from identity theft to uh, drug-related calls to drunk driving reports. Um, the uh, the uh, police department also recently partnered with uh, an online reporting agency called GetCrashReports.com. So if you're involved in a car accident and the police show up, you can get and pay for your car accident reports online. It's uh, GetCrashReports.com. Uh, and if you're in any of the four towns, Barry, Parkinson, Ocam, or Rutland, you can get that done that way. Um, we hope to continue the partnerships that we've had with the town agencies, the school departments, the regional agencies, uh, regional dispatch, and I want to thank the officers for their dedication, um, their hard work, and their attention to detail and their appearance. They've been outstanding to work with. Any questions? I just wanted to thank the um, police department. They've been coming to many of the drug coalition meetings that we have been having, and they've been speaking, you know, to the public or helping us decide where we're going from there. And they have been a, a great help, and um, we really appreciate everything that we're doing. We're trying to work together to see what we can do from from our town's point of view to solve this this drug crisis. Um, there's a meeting at the senior center this coming Thursday, I believe, but there's definitely a meeting on Monday at 6 o'clock down at the health center and learn to talk will be there and I know some of the police will be there too to listen to the speaker um, and this particular group has families who have, have had drug problems and have had almost death experiences and they're trying to help our, us all resolve what we can do about the drug situation. But we really thank you all for that. Um, in the past, when we had a situation uh, town-wide and we had to notify the public on, we were able to rely on reverse 911. Uh, that was uh, a task that was uh, taken on by the Sheriff's Department. They have not had that ability since Hurricane Sandy. Um, so we've kind of limped along and used social media, signboard, uh, word of mouth. Um, but if we want to seriously look at how do we effectively tell the residents what's going on, uh, the town may need to look at other ways of doing it. There are many different types of vendors out there. I know Hubbardson and Hardwick use a system called uh, Code Red. Uh, that system can alert you by phone, cell phone, landline, email. Um, right now, we're just hoping that somebody has either uh, an app that you can get stuff from the police department or um, Facebook or Twitter, things like that. But if we want to <coughs> look at doing that, this is not the police side, this is more of a town line. We need to possibly look at doing something like that, so I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Uh, next up, recreation committee. Anybody from the rec here? Anybody. Uh, South Ferry Common Advisory Committee. Town Common, I see Jean sitting over there. Patient. <laughs> <laughs> the treasurer's receipts and cash on the SoftBright system, on our computer system. So uh, she has been going back into 2014 and reposting all our receipts into that system. So we're a little behind on getting free cash certified at this time, but we're working on it. Um, and I can't really tell you when that will happen, but in the very near future. Um, I just want to thank everybody for being great. I've been here almost two years now. I work in a lot of towns. And um, this is the best bunch of people I've ever worked with. So I want to thank you for all that. And it's like my great team. But if there are any questions, that's pretty much what's going on. Any Next questions? Well, thank you very much, Dean. Thanks, Jean. Town Administrator, Heather, do you want to punch some more? I'm kind of coming in <laughs> yeah, the first okay. time around, I think. Huh? All right. Town Clerk, Ellen, do you want to say a few words?
the dog licenses are due April 1st. The old ones will expire on March 31st. So we want to make sure that everybody licenses their dog before June 1st. If the dogs are licensed on or after June 1st, there is a $20 late fee per dog. So, and all of our balances are rolled forward, so we want to make sure that everybody tries to license um, their dogs when they're due. Any dog six months and older needs to be licensed. And the Board of Health has scheduled a rabies clinic for April 28th, um, which is going to be at the Highway Barn, which is 441 Wheelwright Road. I believe they are only doing rabies shots at this clinic, and they are only going to be there from 10 to 11 on that Saturday for shots. In the past, I've always gone down to the clinic to do licenses there. This year, and actually last year, I had. I wasn't there last year either, but this year I will be available on Saturday to do dog licenses, but it's going to be at the Henry Woods building, so that if anybody needs a license, they can come up on that Saturday. They can also come up um, to be available, so they can come do the license the same day. The reason why I'm not going to the clinic is because it would require me copying the database over, or having a laptop to log in, and a printer, and it's just a lot of work for a short period of time and it's just as easy um, to have it on my regular computer so less errors, less room for error I should say. Um, the last day to register to vote for the upcoming town election is the 17th which is tomorrow. The office, the town clerk's office will be open from 9 in the morning until 8 at night so anybody that's not already registered to vote can, is welcome to come up to the office and register to vote or they can fill out a mail-in form as long as it's postmarked before tomorrow, um, it will be acceptable for the town election. The town election is scheduled for um, Monday, April 6th. We have no contests on the ballot. We actually have several offices that um, we don't even have candidates for. So those offices will be write-ins and whoever gets the most writings on those positions wins. So that sounds <laughs> So it's a majority number of votes. Um, if you're interested in knowing which um, seats have no candidates, um, the two cemetery commissioners <coughs> have no candidates on those um, positions. And we also have a planning board um, five-year seat with no candidate. That's a very important seat um, to go with no candidate on the ballot. So um, hopefully, um, if somebody is written in, they'll want the job. Um, <coughs> there is also a question on the ballot. So there is one question on the ballot, and that is, um, to see whether or not the town wants to have their elected cemetery commissioners become appointed cemetery commissions, commissioners by the Board of Selectmen. So they will be appointed by the Board of Selectmen and most likely would fall under the Department of Public Works. So that it's not, but we eventually, eventually, I think that was the <coughs> intention of it. Yeah. Um, other than that, I would like to say, um, over the past, past um, few weeks, we've had a community service worker that was working with us six hours a week to help with the census forms. Um, many of you knew Pat Sibley, um, who was a, a dispatcher within the town for many, many years, and a very big part of our community since I can remember way back when. So um, she was a huge help. She was a, um, you know, a great lady. She enjoyed working for the town, and she enjoyed helping us in the town clerk's office. And unfortunately, she had passed away this past past week. So I'm very, very sad that um, she's no longer with us. She, we really, really enjoyed working with her. So she will be sadly missed, and I'm sure by many of you who work with her as well. But I just wanted to make mention. Um, does anyone have any questions as far as elections, dog licensing, census, business certificates? Okay. 
cash registrations. <laughs> well, thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Tom Collector, Treasurer of the Institute. I don't see Nancy here or the Treasurer. Um, Tom Council, Jimmy Beard, he retired several years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, he's back. <laughs> he's back. <laughs> Tom Council, James Beard. Hi, James. Hi there. <laughs> it is a great meeting. I mean, it, more meetings like this should be held. I hope you plan to have sort of as a regular ongoing thing, meetings like this. I, I think it happened quite a long time ago. Well, that's the oh, last one. Yeah. We only went to in the last, say, six years. Yeah. Uh, as you know, my name is Jim Beard. I'm the town council. Uh, I guess fortunately or whatever, <laughs> I don't know most of you. <laughs> that's a, probably a good thing, in a way. Uh, but. Uh, What I think all the people that have talked already have tried to point out is it's the town of Barry, and it's really, it's a team effort. You're all working for the town of Barry, which is that great big group of people out here that come to the town meeting sometimes and sometimes don't. But you're all working for them. So where I come into this is if you, in your job, as a member of your committee, your commission, as a elected, appointed, whatever it is, are doing something and you think, geez, maybe, maybe there's an issue here, or maybe there's a problem here, or maybe I'm not sure whether I should or shouldn't do this. Um, I guess that's where I would hope that you'd get on the phone and uh, give me a buzz, or in the alternative, get on the phone to Heather and get her a buzz uh, and we can get together and we can talk about whatever it is and hopefully it's not the end of the world, most of them aren't, um, but usually it's better to deal with it while it's still kind of in its infancy and small uh, before it becomes a big monster and uh, overwhelms us all. So my, my hope and my desire and my wish is that we work on these things together uh, and as I say most of the time they can be resolved or at least made into something that is less uh, of a concern than whatever it might have been in the first place. Um, there is a town policy, it was established a couple of years ago, several years ago, where, and every once in a while this came up before that even, to use my services, the town administrator is supposed to be advised. And uh, it's not something that, like, she parcels out my time, you know, one-tenth of an hour to you and two-tenths to you or whatever. It's, it's mainly to keep Heather informed as to what's going on so that maybe your issue relates to some other issue or maybe there's a lot of issues that as a result of what you brought forward need to be brought to other committees to uh, address. So uh, I will always answer the phone if you call, no matter who it is. I will always talk to you. But we need to try to get Heather informed and, and, and involved uh, whenever that happens. Uh, one issue that uh, uh, is kind of a neat one, uh, brought to my attention by Alan, uh, our people down in Boston, every once in a while, those guys that would send down in Boston do something brilliant. <laughs> a lot of times they do things that, as we all know, are just plain stupid. Um, in this case, we have had occasions in the past where town meetings are scheduled, especially during the winter. And we have events like we've had during the last month or so where there's this white stuff that comes down or it forms ice on the roads or whatever, and there's no way people are going to get to that town meeting. Now, the town moderator has the ability, without convening a bunch of people at wherever the town meeting is being held, to actually put that town meeting off to another day. So, that would preclude everybody from going all over the roads, getting into accidents, giving the ambulance uh, squad, the EMS more, more work, which they, they don't want, 
They love it, but they don't want it. And, and that, that's one of the brilliant things they've done. The other, the stupid things that they do with these mandates that, that uh, were being discussed. I mean, they constantly come down with stupid mandates. In any event, uh, periodically, and usually it's once a year, I have to fill out a little thing to go to the town uh, auditors. And it's my input to what they put together regarding the town. And I have to advise them if there's any active, uh, pending, potential uh, legal actions involving the town, as far as what they may be, ranges from just about everything. And I have to indicate, yes, I do know uh, this, this, and this. And I usually tell them uh, in the letter that I rely on the fact that in Barry, the people keep our town administrator informed as to what's going on. So her input would be extremely valuable to know whether there are any uh, pending or potential uh, matters involving litigation. So I sign this thing. Uh, I rely on your input. Uh, Heather passes her input along. Uh, we have a labor council. He passes his input along. Uh, I don't know if they get any input from Maya uh, or not. I don't think they do. But in any event, uh, it's actually used partly to determine the town's bonding uh, and, and uh, things like that, so I, I understand. So that's all I have to say. Uh, I enjoy uh, working with you all. Um, I've done this for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Seems like my kids are getting older and they were pretty damn small when I first started. Uh, little babies. So, and grandchildren, and <laughs> time's flying. So, and uh, look forward to hearing from you or not hearing from you. <laughs> However, that may work out. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Okay, next, the veteran day. Tony, you say, Tony? I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if as anybody's noticed, my budget went up a little bit in the last couple of years. I guess that means I was either doing my job or some things on the side. The good thing about the veterans' office is there's a lot of veterans in town, and we work together, getting information to me so I can help other veterans that are in need. And I'm also the cemetery, uh, the graves' office. So if you want some input on the cemeteries, maybe you should have them come in and, and uh, help you decide even if, you, if it goes to appointing uh, cemetery commissioners. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a, it's a pretty big deal in this town. There's only 21 cemeteries, I think 21. And uh, in, in the town we have uh, veteran cemeteries, which should cover uh, it's 11 or 14, something like that. Uh, change, ours changes a little bit because some of friends from the cemetery, and they say, I think my father's a veteran, or believe it or not, my mother was a veteran, uh, my grandmother. And so the research, we go into the research and start studying and seeing what, what we can find and uh, help out with the situation. So, um, you know, yeah, my budget went up a little bit from when I first started this this project. Uh, I don't. I hope it doesn't go any further because I think they would uh, put a contract out on me or something. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that is transpiring is we're going to be becoming more certified or certified veterans agents, which gives us a. Uh, um, a lot more movement on getting veterans into the Veterans Administration. Uh, the way it works right now is we'll help them out with making out the paperwork, but once it leaves our office, we can't, we can't do anything about it, we can't follow up on it, uh, because we're not certified. Uh, other areas that are other, as they call them, veteran service officers, with the DAV or uh, the big American legions that have certified uh, veterans agents, uh, they can go right into our 
Boston, or call right into Boston with a permit and everything and get the information that they need. But the Department of Veterans Services feels that we're uh, shorting our veterans by not being able to be certified and being able to get the information sooner than our process right now is the veteran contacts me, I contact Boston, Boston contacts the contract, the contact in the JFK building, and it takes a while. But with a new certification, uh, which is going to take about a year, which was really great, I was hoping maybe it would take a little less time, but uh, we'll be able to help more veterans out. Right now, in town, there's 52 veterans who are receiving uh, veterans aid from the Veterans Affairs in a, a substantial amount. The money is coming back into the town, which is great because they're being taken care of and those funds that they get, they're spending in town uh, and using the town services. Um, I don't, I, I don't project to have too many more veterans coming into my office. Uh, we have a, in this town, we have a lot of veterans, and there's a lot of veterans that talk to me and talk to me with my fellow veterans, get information to us, and it seems like things are going okay. So, do you have any questions? Thank you very much, Tony. 75%. Oh, well, yeah, in my, my budget, each month, uh, I submit to the, to the state for reimbursement. And the reimbursement level is 75%. So whatever benefits I give out, I give out. It's authorized to give out. In the town, to veterans, uh, the state reimburses us 75%. So if you look at it, that the benefits right now is about seventy thousand dollars, so you do the math. You're getting back about fifty thousand dollars each year, as long as they agree with what I put in. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Does that mean five minutes? <laughs> Definitely. Do you want to talk and get you all set? I think you kind of covered it earlier, didn't you? I covered everything. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, you, the commission. I don't see.
they finally got their paperwork. So, but your Vermonty money did get cut. Yeah. Um, so I asked, what can I do? And everybody says, nothing. I'm like, all right. Yeah. So what we have to do, and I already talked to him about this, is there'll be supplemental bills as we go, which I'm still learning about. So um, I try to put that in there. She's done. That she'd support it, or it's not a ton of money, it's what you need for pounds. Mm -hmm. um, it might go through. And, and the good thing um, that I was told by um, the minority leaders is the projects have not. If yeah. it's not started, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, we even said that. We said, well, you know, you see, if we hadn't spent any money, or, right. you know, that's. But we're going to get a half ton, that, that's. And the contract signed. Right, that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, that that's going to. Um, you favor with you guys. And it's not a ton of money. It's not like 10 million. Yeah. Yeah. So that's your deal. Mm -hmm. That was the only other project you got back. Yeah. Right, there was the, the transportation bond bill. There was um, yeah, money was that? for um, Route 62. And how much was that? Um, no. Million <laughs> four or something like that? I put it on my list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're hoping to tie it into the contract. Yeah, that's right here. Yeah, because this road is hard. That's tip money. Yeah, that's tip. Yeah, so you're right. Common money, but the transportation bond. Right. Money. Yeah. So we've tried, Donnie, before to use chapter money to fix this road. Yeah. But the problem is we have water lines under it that break once a year. Yeah, and so yeah. they need to. So if you want to fix the road up beautiful, and get a water break, which we know is going to happen. We look back to. Yeah. Yeah, you better have the money to fix that. Yeah. And it's all engineered, we already paid for that engineering kind yeah. of chapter. Yeah. Right. That's all a couple three years ago. Um well, how much more did you get when Charlie was in the Two two hundred did you? Mm -hmm. Um two days ago yesterday you just put another uh two hundred chapter nine two hundred million. Yeah. So that would be that's great. Yeah. That is about a hundred thousand. The first one was four uh four million, right? Yeah. <coughs> Three, no, three, 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 three million three. and Governor Patrick only released two. Two. Right. And and Charlie, and the they even didn't sign that hundreds. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so if he does another two, you'll get another couple hundred grand. Yep. That would be good. Mm -hmm. yeah. what they said, probably if you can't use another that curve. Well, no. We can use it. Hey, maybe you can fix the drain. If you do all the drain, you can fix it, and then you might have to pull on the four hundred. The utility part? Yeah. Well, we'll Sometimes I've done that, you know, because um, I did that, that MPO meeting last week at Union Station, and they literally took all of their chapter 90 monies yeah. to, you know, to do some of the projects that they needed in their time. Yeah. Because they just, they thought it was so important at this point to get it done. Yeah. You know, between the combination of the tip money and the um, so that. So what a, what a lot of towns are doing because the roads are so horrible is um, when I sent out that request for projects, mm -hmm. um, and I only needed the ones uh, right now that have already been in the queue, that are already you know approved through a bond bill, and just not signed by the governor. I got deluged by uh, every town for projects, but so within the next couple of weeks they're going to ask for the new ones, all the new. So start thinking about those. I told that to the whole camp tonight. They want to know the new projects, not the ones that are already in the works. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Any new ones to be looking at. So, you know, mm -hmm. And I would say don't go crazy mm -hmm. because Charlie's being very frugal with what they eat right now, which is a good thing. Um, actually, they found out going through uh, Governor Patrick's last budget that there was no chapter money, 90 money scheduled. <laughs> not, not zero. That's great. He was sitting this far away from me when he said that. And, uh, and he has some conversations on the channel with the DESE or uh, Mitchell Chester. Yeah. He said something about him. And I said that eight years ago. And uh, he's like, we're working on that too. So, um, but he's, he's very good. Smart, smart guy who's hired some really smart people to uh, surround them, which is a smart thing to do. So. But yeah, so the, the monument, we're going to try to slide some in the supplemental. And um, uh, our ranking ways of being spent at Todd's school, uh, he's going to do that. And talk to me, and she said she didn't help, so we'll, we'll try. Yeah. That's 
just got some information uh, from the Worcester County Selectmen's Association, and they were talking because this has been discussed for years, and we've talked to many other people about it. Is that this whole thing with prevailing wages? Yeah. And I think what happened when the legislature did it, you know, I'm just surmising from what we've been reading, is they thought it would not be a, they thought it would be less than 15 percent additional costs yeah. to towns, you know, when they went out for a contract. And in many cases, it's been upwards of 30 percent of added costs to the project. And yeah. You know, and so what the Worcester County Association is doing with the MMA, they just, I just got a letter. And it just said that they, you know, would like us to send a letter from our towns just saying that we no longer agree, that we want that. We don't, we don't believe that it can work for our towns. So I just wanted you to, to know that that, you know, is a, is a thought that, you know, to take a stand, the fact that we don't believe that it, it's working. We read at our town hall a few years ago, we got estimates. Um, they actually came under budget, under time, the estimates. We, we got authorization of our one and a half million, and we didn't hold outside the roof and, and put all the windows in the building. And was, we got authorized to borrow one and a half million, it came in at 1.2. We paid, we had extra money in our building uh, payments account, so we put 300 down, so we only uh, bonded 900,000, which was great. Everybody was happy. The contractor we hired, and we got paid because we hired a, a PNP officer.
pushes up. Yeah. Um, so we're expecting the uh, uh, DSC to fight that. The good thing is, is there's all these groups, you know, the stock all common core, and, and they're all behind me. Yeah. Um, so, so hopefully that helps you. I'm guessing, and from what Charlie says, that this is all going to go away, hopefully. Yeah. Especially where our kids were number one in the nation. Mm -hmm. We were tied in math with Singapore for number one in the world. Our kids in the island, and you got to change it and do this stuff that everyone yeah. has to do. It. <laughs> yeah, if we were a country, yeah. that's exactly where we are. We would be like, you know, the third and the fourth best in the world yeah. Yeah. because of, of our ability. And there was a TNG uh, article yesterday, um, and it just talked about the fact that we are removing these kids from this literature, which they, they it's classic literature, and they need to be doing this reading. It's, yeah. it's part of what the world is all about. It's all of those references and allusions to that. And um, we're making some mistakes in that, and we need to rethink that, and we need to look at that again. Um, and one of the problems with the Common Core thing, the math, the math thing, it, it just blows my mind. Yeah, how they do it. You've done this with it. <coughs> Multiplying or adding 73 and 52, so they write 70 circles in the yeah. tens box and three in the ones box. Yeah. And they add them all together. And it takes 42 seconds to add them together. Six weeks old, they have to be working 40 and 50 hours a week, both parents. 
So not all children start the same way. And if we can get them into preschools and get them into kindergartens, they have a better chance of then faring with the others who had other opportunities in life. And if we pay it then and, and do it in a positive way then, then we're not putting it in to prisons. You know, and we're and, and we've got to try. Did you choose something else? <laughs> I, 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 I was, you know, and I'm just saying no that. Shot. No shot. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get I just was saying, no, we just forget. Yeah. <laughs> That's just something that I know Rose has talked about. I just wanted to talk about. Studies have shown that zero to five are the first, like the most important yeah. developmental or yeah. cognitive functioning. There was a study that said you know, five year olds, if you took the five year olds, you can tell exactly where they are. Yeah. At five. That's, like, you, never you don't have to wait. It's at five. That's when I started to beat my, when my son when he turned five. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Yeah
Play-Doh programs, you get about 35 people. I have a toddler program that I do in the mornings, and I get anywhere from 18 to 35 people. It's right across the common. The library serves your own part and supplement a lot of what goes on in the town. Okay, and I'm sure the library people will be knocking on my door. Well, you never know, just in case not this year. It's definitely going to fall like tomorrow. Yeah, go see that. He says he'd hear anything you have to say. No, thank you. That was an interview. Some crazy ones. Yeah. <laughs> 